G'day, welcome to Geoterex Outdoors Australia. I'm Ralph and this is the van life number three. After getting the, the van fixed, some repairs done, registered and a few other accessories mounted to the, the top, the roof and other bits and pieces, I've set out on the big road trip. So number three, the road trip. A couple of weeks ago, I left here in Canberra and drove almost 1,200 kilometres to Brisbane. And I stayed a couple of nights there with uh, with family, my daughter and grandkids, and picked up Ty and we went to Tin Can Bay. Now Tin Can Bay is a beautiful little fishing village opposite Fraser Island. Couldn't go to Fraser, obviously, it's not a four-wheel drive bus, but we could see it from where we were camping. Um, did some activities up there, went for a bit of a paddle, which is actually also um, a video that I've released. I've put the link up here for you and uh and then drove back to brisbane and from brisbane went to tannerfield went to a wedding in toowoomba um, then back to tannerfield and, and the next day we went uh, tannerfield to grafton um, and then grafton to canberra 3200 kilometers that's 2000 miles um, the bus performed incredibly well didn't miss a single beat only had two problems First problem was a squealing belt. Got a loose belt somewhere, had the mechanic fix it, well, fix it, before I left. And uh, as I started to drive, it was actually uh, worse than before. One thing I did notice, if I disengaged the circuit breaker for the air conditioning, it wouldn't be as bad. But it, it would kick in at a certain speed or revs, and then the belt would squeal, and I'd either have to slow down or change up gears. And that was annoying. That was so annoying. I don't know if anyone has a similar problem who owns a, a Toyota Coaster, but that was a real problem. Um, and uh, and I, I think I need to take it to someone else other than my usual mechanic um, and see what we can do about checking out the air conditioning and, uh, and maybe stopping that belt from making that dreadful noise. The other problem is I had a flat tire. So on the way from Tannerfield to Grafton, down um, I think it was the Guida Highway it was um, I got a flat probably 30 k's out of Grafton um, parked up for the night uh, in a motel because there's there was three of us uh, Sonia had her car and she went ahead um, and then the next day I got it repaired and uh, which was amazing $59 they took took the old tire off repaired it the tube actually had split and it was one bit, bit of spaghetti that was just rolling up inside the the tire luckily it didn't damage it any further <clears throat> but because it's got dual wheels at the back the uh the, there wasn't any um it wasn't a problem to drive it on the remaining uh, good tire i slowed down and uh, and got to grafton quite okay uh took all of an hour to 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 do it all and and off i went for $59, $60, it was, uh, it was fantastic and uh, it was great, um, it was really great service. So then I got uh, back to Canberra and, uh, and I'm just cleaning out and sorting a few things out now, um, unpacking and, uh, and doing this video. So in Tin Can Bay, this uh, fantastic kayak trip was only possible because I bought some extra hardware. The problem of getting a kayak from the ground up to a, a bus that's so particularly high off the ground, <clears throat> I think the roof is is around about 2.2 metres off the ground. Um, it was impossible for me to do in any, any other way other than buy a set of roof racks. I end up having to get specialised bars because of the uh, the height above the gutter that the roof and various bits and pieces above the roof sit. I had to get 440 millimeter or 44 centimeter bars. I'll put the inches there, down there. Try to get the kayak on with uh, with those bars on, on their own. And that was, that was really, really difficult. So I ended up getting a Trades ladder roller and that rolled up okay. Problem is that there was risk that the kayaks would slip off the, the racks as I try to put them on and or slip onto the the hardware on on the roof the the as you can see behind me here the the skylight and various other bits and pieces so I end up getting um, the Rhino rack Nordic stack 
so the kayaks wouldn't go across onto the hardware and I got a, a high standing eye bolt um, again from from Rhino Rack and so the kayak could go up as we were pushing it from behind and could stay between those two and not fall off either side so that was a that was a great way to do that problem is um, doing that on your own or even with two short people I'm six foot um, I couldn't do it without Tyrone's help um, I end up needing to get a ladder and I end up getting a, a four-way folding ladder so I could fold it out I could fold it up I could do various other bits and pieces and I tried them all so what ended up working best was two segments the middle segments um, horizontal and the end legs vertical and I could actually get up on there and then do the various straps up and position it and and, and as it turns out we had some rain so I turned them upside down so I wasn't carrying a half a ton of, of water weight on the roof which uh, would have slowed me down even more so I've got to find a, a better technique but was pretty happy with with that and then on the way back from Tin Can Bay Tyrone put his kayak on the other side um, so when we offloaded it back in Brisbane it wouldn't be too much of an effort to actually just get his off without having to undo both of them and various things like that. And it didn't move a millimetre uh, on the trip up or on the trip back or even the, both of them on the trip to King Can Bay. So absolutely fantastic. Like I said, the bus didn't miss a beat. It did burn a bit of fuel. I was getting 20 litres per 100 kilometres, which is about 53 miles per gallon. It's pretty high. But... This is four and a half tons with you know wet weight with all the gear in it and it's a 2.4 litre petrol engine so the little mighty little engine that is so impressive needs to push or pull along a, a whole lot of weight so fuel economy is going to to suffer there's some options i discussed with ty and <clears throat> may implement in uh, in getting some of the doors and changing the weight of the doors to to thinner doors that are less weight um, there's that's one option um, various other ones that uh, that I'm going to explore and see what weight I can get the the bus down to but I doubt I'm going to get it below 4.2 tons either way with wet weight with uh, all the gear in and batteries and various other things
Oh yeah. That's it. Forty five. Hey, if you've enjoyed watching this video nearly as much as I enjoyed making it and being part of it, I'd really be thrilled if you could hit the like button and give us a thumbs up. I'd be even more thrilled if you could subscribe to the channel. By subscribing and hitting the bell icon, you'll get notified of all our future videos coming out. And feel free to go into the video section of our channel and see what we've done before or the playlist. There's lots of different playlists of kayaking and now the van life and hiking and um, the high country drives and, and high country videos and the nature videos we're, we're doing. Um, and, uh, and I hope you enjoy it. Please share it with your friends and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.